next two groups of speakers represent the age and the contrast of the Stop the War Coalition. This event is organised by Stop the War Coalition, British Muslim Initiative and the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament. We also appeal to and have support from all ages. I'd like to give a very warm welcome to Charlie and Edward Stashti from Students from Stopping the War Coalition and Shukri Saltan from School Students Against the War who are now going to address the crowd. Welcome!
much the real voice of young people in Britain standing up for principles and standing up for justice. Thank you very much. The next speaker is difficult to introduce. She was born in 1905. She took part in the general strike. She's old enough to be Tony Benn's mother. She's been in the peace movement all her life. She's been on every anti-war march. She's marched every step of the way on every single march. And her only complaint is that we march too slowly. Hetty Barr is aged 106. The oldest peace campaigner, absolutely brilliant woman, inspirational. Please give a real Trafalgar Square welcome to Hetty Barr. I am in my cosy warm room, preparing to sleep. Suddenly, the scene changes. I am back in 1914, nearly nine years old and I hear my father clearly say, so we are at war. This is where the lines begin. And begin they did. We learned the Germans were cutting off the hands of the children in Belgium. The lives have changed, but they continue. May peace in the world remain. Fantastic. Remember what the words Hetty just gave us. Absolutely incredible. Hetty, thank you very, very much for that short and brilliant and inspirational message. Our next speaker I'm pleased to welcome is a good friend from my local university, very active in the University College Union, brilliant campaigner for social justice and peace. Please welcome Mark Campbell. First of all, a message from our General Secretary Sally Hunt, who can't unfortunately be here today. We are now a decade into a war that has cost the lives of thousands of people. The public no longer buy the government line that our involvement makes our country more stable and is rightly questioning our continued involvement. Especially when austerity measures are forced on the poorest in our society. Half the children out of school in the world are now living in countries where there are wars taking place. Our responsibility is to build a better world and we do not do that through war. Those are the words of Sally Hunt. I'll add a few of my own now. It's now becoming fashionable not just to criticise the Iraq war and occupation, but to raise doubts about the Afghanistan occupation. Even some Tories are expressing their doubts. On BBC's Question Time last night, Max Hastings said that it's time to withdraw because the war is not winnable and has been a waste of the lives of 300 dead British soldiers. What he has to be reminded of were the deaths of over 10,000 Afghanis and over 100,000 homes and sanity of Afghan people that has been destroyed. He needed reminding of that and we shouldn't forget it. What is remarkable about these late converts to ending the war is the way they still strain everything to justify the interventions in the first place. Removing a terrorist government, bringing democracy to Afghanistan. None of them can bring themselves to utter the word imperialism and let that slip from their tongue because that's what all of these wars have been about. 
To hear that truth, you have to come to the Stop the War movement, to the trade unions and to the socialist organisations that have consistently opposed all of these murderous interventions. That's why UCU supports and will continue to support Stop the War and why we will not bow to those who say that trade unions should only be about so-called bread and butter issues and we should avoid politics. Well, I'll tell you what, politics is about bread and butter issues. When they spend billions on war, when they kill our brothers and sisters abroad, they are damaging us. They are damaging our services. They are damaging our people. They are damaging our universities and our children's futures. We are the one in the world, and that means we are proud to stand with regards to fighting against the war. We will demand politics in our unions and we should start to get the strength in our unions. When they declare these interventions, we should actually use our industrial strength and start walking out of our jobs. We should strike the fight back against war. Thank you.